little bit ahead in pretty much every aspect. Absolutely. They're outclassing them on paper. Can they do it in game, though, as well? That remains to be seen. I'm already pumped to see which battlegrounds are going to be deployed. Is KT trying to maybe go for the Sergeant Hammer style again that they did against CE on Dragonshire? Or are they going to play a little more standard this time around? But simply due to the fact, look at that ban. Beyond the game, they ban Dragonshire because they are not <laughs> willing to commit to those shenanigans that CE fell victim to. Instead, though, it is going to be Tomb of the Spider Queen, another very solid KT map, so it should still be scared. KT, this was actually the other map that they brought out against mm -hmm. CE, where they just played a nice little standard Jaina Hanzo Blaze composition with a lovely Deckard Kane, which is immediately banned. BTG have done their <laughs> research. Yeah, you want to take that Deckard away. KT has done so well with it. And if you eliminate Deckard, maybe also shut down the Sergeant Hammer already, because I think it was largely because of Deckard and his potions uh, that Sergeant Hammer was able to do what she could do uh, in yeah. that previous game against CE. Interesting fact that every single time KT have picked Deckard Kane, they have won. They only have one win that was not with Deckard, and it was with mm. Malfurion. I'm pretty sure Beyond the Game did the exact same research, Tetris. So uh, already we can see they did their homeworks. And uh, always good. Always good. Always good. What are they going to respond, though, KT, that is? What ban are they going to field into this draft? Well, BCG, Maev being banned away from them. They haven't really had the chance to pick Maev too often due to the fact that, well, it's banned in most games, but mm -hmm. they did bring it out against CE during one of these series earlier, and it did do pretty reasonably. So it's a reasonable ban, and it's still just a hard hero to deal with. So now Malfurion being stolen away as well. Nice little support choke coming in by BTG. There's obviously so many good supports left available for KT. The question is, how comfortable are they with them? Yeah, Malfurion, of course, not really showing anything immediately. Um, it's really hard to counter a Malfurion with a specific hero. Uh, actually, I think um, Dagger Kane is one of the heroes that could counter him pretty nicely. Like, you drop that Emerald Cube onto a Tranquility, for example, onto all the existing regrowth heals, and you're going to greatly diminish all the healing that, all the AoE healing that a Malfurion can do. But, of course, that is no longer an option. The KT, they're starting off with a Ganjo and the Blaze. And that is a hero for Hape, I believe. Hape, one of the strongest Genjis in there. Hape is, in fact, likely going to be the Genji. He brought it out twice versus SPT, lost the first game, won the second. So, really cool to see the uh, Genji making the return. They still need a Hope hero, but they've got plenty of options for that. They've got Phoenix, they've got Tychus, they've got plenty of stuff. But now, let's see what BTG go. They go for some point and click CC because there's a Genji on the other side. And they also bring out one of the classic combos, of course, with yes. the Diablo Lightning Breath into Purification Salvo. All righty then. It is. Not only do they have a Hape hero now with that Genji, but they also steal it away from LLK on the side of Beyond the Game, who's also been tearing uh, things apart on that hero. So that is certainly another benefit of picking Genji early, next to, of course, applying a lot of pressure. I think this might actually be the first Genji game we are witnessing today, couldn't it? Because uh, I think in I all the other games today, it was banned. This is an affirmative observation, Mr. Kendrick. You are right. There we go. As we see the Thrall removed away by KT, very reasonable. It's a solid solo laner that could also add even more slows mm -hmm. for the Phoenix combo. And the other hero that really fits into that would be Jaina, but there's a good chance that KT might want that for themselves. Yeah, I think so too. I think you're up onto something there. I think that Jaina is um, a high priority hero now for KT. Is Beyond the Game willing to take it away? No, that is a target ban if I've ever seen one. Timeless. Mm -hmm. They don't want him on his baby girl, Johanna, the hero that has carried them to most of his victories. His Muradin, though, is still pretty decent, so mm -hmm. it wouldn't be, it's not going to be the worst situation for him to find himself in. So Jaina and Hanzo, both left available for KT here, both as uh, very solid options. question is, 
the Jaina, I think, makes a little bit... Sorry, not the question. The uh, way I'm seeing this is the Jaina, I think, makes more sense because it is a denial pick to BGG, but still fits in as good burst damage along with Genji. Sets them up for a very burst-style composition. And Jaina, of course, has the Ice Block, which is potentially good protection against the Purification Salvo, if she can get stacked, and against the Diablo Burst. And, you know... Uh... The Jahana band there makes a lot of sense. Not only you want to do you want to take it away from uh, Timeless after all, but also uh, you think you remove a lot of the early game rotation power. You know, Johanna, out of all the tanks available, she's probably offering the most uh, wave clear speed. She uh, not only has good AOE damage, but also brings all the minions together, which would have been so nice with the Jaina Blizzard uh, hitting the entire wave. But Murden will probably get the job done as well. Maybe not as efficiently, but he's still going to get it done. And here is the Jaina. We talked about it. We kind of touched upon it. And uh, let's see what they can do with it. They still lack a support. There is a couple of them available, a couple of good ones. Maybe an Alex Drasa, maybe a Stukov. They have played it in the past, KT. They have indeed. The question is, are they willing to play it this time? As BTG, though, they need some extra damage and a solo laner. With Blaze already on the board, that opens up for Leoric, which would be another slow for the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Just go all in on that style. And then it's up down to Damage Dealer with Hanzo already available on the board. I feel this would be the way they would wish to go, unless they want something like a Tychus to begin burning through that very heavy front line. All right. They're taking their sweet time finding the last two additions. Tassadar and Tracer. So, no, so Phoenix dedicated solo laner here, or they're going for a two-three, or they're going for a two-three split. Yeah, if you go for a two-three split, then normally you want to make sure that your triple lane has enough wave clear. Hmm, I'm not sure if that's going to be the case though. But as you said, either way, like it, it's not going to be a, a really bad split. I feel because Phoenix could be a formidable solo laner. We all know that by now. Yeah. And if you go for a four-man rotation with Tassadar. Malfurion and Tracer, you have a lot of protection for the Tracer, and still pretty good wave clear with Tassadar's Ice Storms. Tass also adds more slows, comboing with the Phoenix even True. more. It's all pretty, all coming together here. It's KT. Whoa! Okay, last time we saw this, it did not go well, but it was not from KT, uh... it was from RPG. TWT against a Tracer comp. Putting his team's hopes on the Ana here. That is some bravery coming in right now. I am impressed and scared at the same time for KT. Impressed because I agree. I think it's maximum bravery going for the Ana, and it also takes a lot of individual skill to hit those skill shots and to also practice the hero well enough. Yeah. So TWT, I tip my fedora. However, I'm also scared because as you said, Tetcher, we have a couple of heroes that could very well ruin Ana's day. You know, the Diablo, the Tracer, most importantly, the Tasser, even with the Force Wall, maybe. So, uh, ooh, they better don't lose this early game and fall behind. Yeah, Ana, uh, with the Eye of Horus tattoo over her eye, it is a tattoo that usually means protection shared with her uh, with her daughter, Farah. I'm going to be honest, Kalaris, I don't think you? that tattoo is going to be enough. Uh, <laughs> so I have concerns. How do you know these things, Tetra? Are you the Kalaris of Overwatch lore? No, I just know... I studied a little bit of ancient Egypt, and I know that simple. There you go! That's amazing! All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Archaeologist Tetra and I are going to dig our way <laughs> into the tomb of the Spider Queen. How fitting, actually! That's amazing! Ancient Egypt-themed battleground. BTG on the left-hand side. 619 playing the Diablo. LLK on that Phoenix Druid is going to be in the Malfurion dancing on the Tracer and three on Tassadar. And on the right-hand side, it is KT with Hope on Jaina, Timeless on Muradin, TWT on Ana, Hikari on Blaze, and Hate is bringing out the Genji. Nano Boost Hope sounds terrifying. Nano Boost Hate sounds terrifying, although it's not as effective as it mm. used to be, where it actually used to reduce the cooldown of the Dragon Blade on release, which was a bit absurd. Absolutely. I think a boosted Jaina, that is definitely what they're trying to go for here for the mid-late game after level 10. And it sounds terrifying. Hope up to this point has been one of the most threatening uh, ranged assassin players in the league. Only 
Uh, only God knows what he's going to be able to do with the Nana Boost in, uh, injected into his oh. body. Nice little juke there by three. He moved up as if mm -hmm. it was going in the bush. Hope dropped the full combo, but three was baiting. Duke's back and is able to dodge the majority of the damage. Timeless eating a lot of damage himself here. The root in the way of his escape route, but he is going to be able to make it out. Ana keeps him alive for now, and I also wanted to highlight the grenade timing and accuracy by TWT. Uh, denying so much of the healing, not only from the Malfurion, but also the self-healing from Diablo because of his talent at level 1. Whenever he slams someone into walls, he's going to regenerate a pretty significant amount of his maximum health. So uh, that could very Bye, well timeless. be quite useful. Timeless in trouble. Hi, is timeless. Nearby. Hi, Timeless. He survives. TWT oh. with the save. Anna checking in from the mid lane, able to keep him alive as LLK's in trouble and a snipe by hate. Who's going to stop hate and hope if they, uh, you know, co if they continue to turn it up this way? And something that I just mentioned uh, uh, or realized and noticed about the Ana is the fact that if you rotate with her from middle to top, top to middle, and so on and so forth, with a superior range on her healing darts, she can actually cover a lot of ground without really, you know, needing to rely on the timing. Very true. Very true. This could be useful. As Timeless, once again, taking the damage, but he's already tanking through, 619. Continuing to play aggressive with this Diablo, healing uh, sleep dart stacks begin to accumulate. Are they gonna try and fight over this? Timeless drops the Storm Boy, here comes the base on. they're gonna try and fight over this. The anti-healing dart is, the anti-healing grenade is down. Darcy trying to put some pressure onto the back line, which is working very well. TWT will fall here eventually, but the fight continues. Diablo dropping low, but they're outnumbered. They really should back up here. Timeless already backing up. Hope is looking, for, Hate, sorry, is looking for the reset, but 619 is taking too much of all the CC that's down. He will go down. Hikari wow. may fall as well. And that was over ambitious by KT. That was one over ambitious by KT. Absolutely true. I agree. And Ana just super susceptible to uh, the tracer. We could basically see it right there. But on the other hand, it was also so well played by Beyond the Game, getting their focus priority right. And then those were the tiny little details. I think Genji was actually hoping that he might be able to get some additional damage done by the deflect, right? Tracer auto attack is going to be ding, 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 deflect. But they stopped attacking him the moment he activated his W. Yeah. And so that was task. just beautiful. Sorry, what was that? So did Tass. Tass, was all, Tass also has that high attack speed, which can Absolutely. gain value play, but he also uh, used the Hell Command to stop mm -hmm. himself attacking, so really nicely done. By the way, Genji setting himself up to potentially be empowered by a nano-boosted Ana, going with a Shuriken build here. Very true, very true. And uh, I just wanted to highlight that, uh, you know, although this team fight in the bottom lane didn't go so well, first of all, the experience gap is still pretty much manageable for KT, so it was not like they yeah. uh, took a big blow to this. And on the other hand, I think Ana's positioning was fine. It was just that if Tracer maybe hadn't had the Pulse Bomb ready or if uh, Murden had peeled a little bit more for her and applied uh, a little bit more pressure onto the engaging assassins, then she would have been just fine. So I think up to this point, TWT definitely doing a pretty good job on the Ana, always trying to cater towards his teammates' needs. Yep, so far his one death was really down to not really getting any peeling or no focus onto that Tracer. So, mm -hmm. so And his healing has been on point, so... Right now, Diana, it's not exactly a detriment as of yet, but for now, level yeah. 7 hit by BTG a little bit quicker as they were able to pick up those three kills and the mercenary camp. With both teams just cleaning up minions, gem wise, two gems away from BTG having a full turn in the mount. T uh, KT do have enough already, but they haven't even turned in a single gem yet. Yeah, I think uh, Beyond the Game has been doing a really good job so far, you know, closing out the choke points here. Hope and trouble into the roots. Can they keep her alive? No, they can't. That was just a beautiful yeah, combo. The overpower into the roots, into the Tracer Pulse Bomb. Beyond the Game is just playing this very aggressively and very deadly. They really are, and it's working out for them. Timeless getting chased down once again, tanking through, at least for the moment. Anna continues to drop the heals. They're looking still for this opportunity to get the turn in. Jane is back alive. Diablo already stacked on his Soul Stone. Nice interrupt by mm -hmm. Blaze. He eats a lot of damage from LLK in exchange. And Muradin, once again, gets targeted, gets root, and down he goes. I mean, that is just masterclass by beyond the game this is exactly oh how you played over and over again 619 is enabling those plays followed by druid followed by dancing a deadly dance oh of the druids. nice twt turned in so that is a red Beautiful. web 
Weaver turn in as KT getting the first turn in of the game. How much can they get out of this? Depending on if they can grab a couple towers, they could catch up an XP here. Yeah, I think this is now KT's moment to catch up, you know. If they get a couple of towers in middle and top and bottom. Excuse me. They could certainly come back, you know. It's only half a level that they're currently behind. So uh, we just need to play it a little safer. By the way, can we give a shout out to DW TWT landing every single sleeping dart up to this point? I mean, Diablo is a big target, mind you, but he still has absolute astonishing accuracy and he's pr probably doing a pretty darn good job at stacking up his uh, piercing darts. Ape trying to slow down the rotations to give the web weaver maximum amount of value in that top lane as everyone else rotates to bot lane. Try and grab these towers, try and get themselves to level 9. Right now they're still over half a level behind. They're desperately trying to get any structures here to give themselves mm -hmm. some XP numbers. Oh, that that's more to land it. There's a good chance that would have been a kill onto LLK. The web weaver goes down, they're forced to back up before the tower dies. Yeah, no tower destruction here and... Uh... Look at that defense by Beyond the Game. They were absolutely on point there. I mean, Tassadar also helps greatly defending on Towers of Doom. Uh, sorry, Tomb of Spider Queen, right? Not only does he have the shields, yeah. and I think those shields were actually crucial no in keeping died. those towers alive, but also his wave clear is yeah. so good. You called it. No towers died. Those Tassadar shields saving the top towers as well. And now with level 10, we are going to see BTG picking up their first turn in, mm -hmm. grabbing it as quick as possible because it's only half a level until KT get 10, which means they will get at least a couple seconds of uninhibited pushing with that level 10 advantage. Already, we can say, though, that out of all the Ana attempts that we've seen in HCC China up to this point, this one looks the most promising. Why? Because they're almost about to hit level 10 and they haven't taken any critical damage right right they're only one level behind could of course fall behind a little bit more now with that uh first web viewer push for the blue team but i think once they get level 10 once they have the nano boosted jaina uh hope could really be that big x factor that makes the team fights finally go into kt's favor Possibilities there, but he needs to be alive for it. He's able to pull back to his fountain. In comes Tracer, though. Stands in the lightning breath and gets taken out by the pulse bomb. Nice little kill. The level 10 is now available, but with a man down, KT in trouble, getting pushed back by BTG. But with level 10, this is their chance to try and start making a comeback. They just need everyone alive to start making it to work. Yeah, absolutely true. The BTG sprays are real. Is there a little bit of a rivalry going on between those two teams? Because the spray game has absolutely been on point up to this. There have been a lot of sprays coming, uh, coming in here as three pulls back. LLK puts some siege damage onto Hikari. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be all three forts taken out by BTG. That's going to give them level 13. So the one chance KT had to fight on even talents was ruined by that kill a little bit earlier. They're going to move in even against level 13 here. K, uh, Timeless going in so deep. Hope does survive the pulse bomb, but it's still getting focused down. The healing does not enough to keep him alive. TWT taken out as well. And this is not looking good, Kendrick. No, this is not looking good at all. If Jaina had maybe uh, unlocked her ice block already, then she could have stayed saved there. But, you know, with so many people just running around like chicken in that team fight, um, there is only so much Nana can do, right? Because you're eventually going to hit the wrong target uh, and not the Jaina you wanted to hit there in the first place. And Tracer, just quite honestly, is just quite the menace here up to this point. And we saw it there, only 8,000 and a little something uh, for the Jaina accumulated. She needs 15,000, so... Um, essentially, she's only halfway there, and we need that ice block. But is it already going to be too late? Look at that Tetcher. Beyond the game gets another set of Whip Weavers. Another set of Whip Weavers on the way. This is... I don't know. Like, I'm not even upset about the fact it's an Anna and she's immobile, which is the usual issue I have. Her healing output just isn't enough mm. to keep people alive at this point. Yeah. The burst damage is proving to be too much at this stage. The bunker not proving enough protection at this point. Maybe, I don't know, what solo laner would have been able to do this. Maybe Tyrion and you just go for the lane hold just for any kind of protection to make that kind of comp work. If the double heal comes in, where is the nano boost? It has come down. Jaina dropping all the damage that she can. Dropping it down the bucket. In comes the lightning breath for the counter. Though, as home is deleted. Hape in danger too. Dancing with the pulse bomb and Hape is down too. Yeah, that was the quickest quad quill I think we've seen all day long. The sprays are deployed and beyond the game is marching in. The broccoli is doing God's work and tanking a little bit of that keep damage. Now also adding a little bit of damage there as well. So 
I think with that was Wet Beavers knocking on the front door of KT. Uh, even if they don't get the core beyond the game that is, which I think it's still too early for, they're going to have double catapults after almost 11 minutes, Tetcher. Four level lead. And we thought KT had, uh, you know, something planned, but it looks like the Anish shenanigans remain without success. I'm not sure if it works out in scrims. I'm not sure if they saw it somewhere else work, but up to this point, HCC China Phase 2 of 2018, it's pretty bad. Well, they killed Jaina, so that's nice. But even with that mana boost, the lightning breath's too good, damage output's too good. I don't know what to say about that. That was just an absolute massacre. The comp is... I like the idea behind it, but they're three levels down and it's not working, which is a bit of an issue if you're, you know, intending to ever win the game. Mm. And if you if you see uh, the damage numbers here, the hero damage numbers, it's not like, you know, BTG... Okay, here we go. They're not giving Round us two, any time. Round three. Round three. Down the boosted Jada being kept alive and dead. In comes the purification salvo for good measure. Good deflex by Genji. X strike completely misses, but it will allow Hape to escape. In the meantime, TWT is dying to Jane, uh, dying to Tracer. Gets the kill with the party gift. Meantime, Hape in the back line trying to kill, you know, anyone, but he's all alone and is getting chased down and will likely die. Down he goes. Uh, yeah. I mean, you gotta give credit to KT for at least not being afraid of fighting, and that's exactly what they need to do, right? There's no way they're gonna come back in a conventional way. Um, but at this point, Beyond the Game doesn't even have to need, fo need to focus on it, right? All they do is just yeah. kill Tra uh, Jaina time and time again. No biggie. It, uh, I don't know, at, th at this point, you might as well just nano boost Genji or something like that. Just don't nano boost Jaina. She's too yeah. easy of a target. Nano boost Genji, maybe nano boost Muradin or something, get that healing static value. I don't know. You, you, something you are doing is not working. The Jaina is too vulnerable. I don't know what to say about this, as, other than this is likely going to be GG. As the boss comes in, there's a bruiser camp in the mid lane as well that Genji's desperately trying to clear. The push coming in as Hope barely survives this. As he's getting focused down. Oh, nice. Bunker Micro, though. Diablo is dropping a little low Not here. Doesn't receive any healing up to this point. Could that be the kill they're looking for? No! Here comes the Retribution Salvo. Not getting any kills up to this point. Oh. Hate also making it out live with the X-Strike. Last a second escape, but don't think it matters. They're all so low. Kudos to them for surviving this time around. But hey, the core is going to go down. The boss is pounding on it. Here come the minions. Here come the catapults. And Tetra, this is going to be a 14, a 13 minute and 20 second win for Beyond the Game. Shenanigans for KT, but hey, might as well just worked in a different universe, maybe. Yeah, was it? I like the idea was there, but once again, the Ana is the, even with the nano boost, the damage output wasn't enough because they fell so far behind in the early game. Yeah, that was just a general outplay by BTG. Um.